Most students study in a way that feels productive, highlighting, rereading, and cramming, but their brain isn't learning. It's stuck. The good news? There are neuroscience-backed study hacks that will literally rewire your brain for faster learning and longer memory. I'm Dr. Eric Albinson, an education PhD and an academic coach, and for the past six years, I've used these exact techniques to help thousands of college students study smarter and get results. By the end of this video, you'll learn the five neuroscience hacks that will cut your study time in half while remembering information three times longer, all by rewiring your brain. The testing effect. You know that feeling when you're sure you know something until you see it on the exam? Yeah, that is your short-term memory ghosting you. By far, the best strategy to ensure that you actually know something is to use the testing effect. Simply, you need to study in the same way you will be tested. This means that you need to put away your notes, your book, your study materials, and pull information from memory. It is important to understand that you haven't learned anything unless it's a long-term memory. When you're using a shallow processing technique, like repetition studying, it builds a false sense of confidence. You often think you know the material, you are looking at something, and it is prompting your memory so you don't really know it. That knowledge is in short-term memory, and when you get to the exam, you'll find out that you are just familiar with the material and you can't retrieve it when you need it. Students will often sit in my office and they will tell me they know where the information was in their notes or textbook, but they just couldn't access it during the exam. This is a sign that you are studying is mostly rereading, rereading your notes, rereading your textbook, and then rereading again. I call this feel-good studying. It is academic work, for sure, you will learn, but it will take a long time. It is easy, shallow studying. It's like training to run a marathon by walking. It's beneficial, you are building capacity, but eventually you need to run. You need to train in the same way that you'll be expected to perform at the big event. Same with studying. To learn quickly, your studying should be effortful, and there's nothing more effortful than pulling something from memory without any prompts. It is proof positive that you absolutely know something, that you're not just falling into that familiarity trap. So what does this look like? Most of my students use whiteboarding. They simply head to the library, bring their markers, grab a whiteboard, and then brain dump everything they know about a particular topic. This process involves deep processing, deep thinking. You are using more of your brain. When you brain dump, something magical happens. You are no longer just repeating what the textbook says, you are reconstructing the knowledge for yourself as a unique learner. By pulling straight from memory, you automatically begin to put things in your own language. You begin to organize information in a way that makes sense to your brain. In other words, you are making knowledge your own. You're making your own meaning. It is the reconstruction of knowledge, not the repetition of knowledge. Tools like flashcards and their electronic counterparts like Quizlet, they're great. They're about memory retrieval and I am a fan, but they are best for memorizing terms. Ultimately, you need to move beyond flashcards and you need to understand how all these terms and ideas connect to form a big picture, a big picture of whatever you are studying. Nothing does this better than whiteboarding. No whiteboard, that's okay. For me personally, I prefer a good old fashioned pen and notepad. When I'm studying, I just carry around a pen and notepad, and when I get a chance, I will brain dump. You don't even need a notepad. It could be as simple as thinking through the topic while you're driving, running on a treadmill, or just sitting. It doesn't always have to be a formal whiteboarding study session. It's about consistency, not intensity. When you learn how to build in memory retrieval practice, the testing effect, throughout your day, your learning will take off. Spaced repetition. If the testing effect strengthens your neural pathways, spaced repetition gives your brain the recovery time it needs to solidify them. It is about giving your brain enough time to process what you learned. When you study, you are using short-term memory to think about your topic. As you continually think about something, you will begin to create a neural network that will eventually become a long-term memory. This is a process known as consolidation, and it largely happens while you're sleeping. This is why cramming doesn't work. If you stay up late cramming information into your head and you only sleep a few hours, you won't retain what you learned because you're not giving your brain enough time to process the information. In other words, the information will knock around in your short-term memory, but it won't consolidate into a long-term memory. You haven't learned anything unless it's a long-term memory. And learning is the whole point of college. 
You are working toward mastery, toward a base of knowledge that you will utilize throughout your career. So don't focus on passing a test. Focus on becoming a specialist in an area of knowledge that will become the foundation of your career. Learning is a physical process. You need to give the brain the time to build these neural networks. We inherently understand that putting in one intense workout won't result in being physically fit. So why do we expect a different result for our brains? We build long-term memories through effortful studying. Study, rest, study, rest. That is spaced repetition. This is how you learn efficiently. Putting in hard work is highly inefficient if you don't build in proper recovery. I've spent six years researching these methods. Help me share this science with other students who are still just rereading their notes. Hit the like button and subscribe so the YouTube algorithm knows that this is real science, not just another TikTok study fad. Elaborative learning. The brain is meant to learn incrementally. You gradually build a base of knowledge and connect new information to existing mental frameworks. These mental frameworks are called schemas and they develop from simple to complex. A child's simple schema might be anything with four legs is an animal. As the child learns more about animals, this schema will become more complex. Dogs go bark, cats go meow. That complexity will increase over time. These are farm animals, these are pets, these are jungle animals. This is the incremental learning preferred by our brains. You build a schema and each time you learn something new, you add another layer of complexity. You add another layer of understanding until you have a deep understanding of the topic. But this type of learning takes time. And if I know one thing about college, it is that you do not have lots of time. A semester is 16 weeks and exams are often scheduled two to three weeks apart. You need to learn fast. So college forces you to build schemas quickly. My favorite method is to intentionally construct schemas through study guides. A study guide is a way to organize what you're learning in a visual way. It's a way that allows you to see the big picture and how all the key concepts connect. The first step is to identify those big concepts. These are the things on your professor's slides, bolded in text in your book. Anything that signals, hey, this is important information. Once you've identified those concepts, you need to collect them from all the different sources in your class. If you are trying to study from five different sources of information, this overwhelms your brain. So find what each of those sources of information says about a particular key concept, and you organize that information into one document, your study guide. So it looks like this. Here's everything I need to know about plasma membranes. Here's what my professor said. Here's what the slide said. Here's what the book said. You gather all that information. You break it down into small, easy to memorize chunks of information. Not surprisingly, this technique is called chunking. Our brains learn better when things are chunked. If I gave you my phone number in one long string, you would look at me like I was crazy. But if I give it to you in a chunk of three, a chunk of three, and a chunk of four, suddenly your brain is no longer overwhelmed. The chunk number is much easier to memorize. So think of everything you are learning as one long phone number string. Your job is to break that string down into chunks of related information. Once you have your chunks, you organize them in a way that shows their relationship to each other. You're building a skeleton of knowledge, the big picture. It's a simple schema that maps out how key concepts are connected. If you're just memorizing facts without building the schema, it's like saving files onto your desktop's computer. Eventually, you will have so many files that it is chaos and it's hard to retrieve any information quickly unless you build an organizational system of folders and folders within folders, a branching chain of information that serves two purposes. It allows you to quickly retrieve information when you need it and it gives you a place to put new information. What happens when incoming information doesn't match any of your existing folders? That's when you create a new folder, a new bucket of information. The process of adding new knowledge to an existing folder is called assimilation. When you need to create a new folder for information that doesn't quite fit your existing framework, that is called accommodation. You are expanding and deepening your understanding by adding new information to your schema. This is the purpose of a study guide. It's not just about collecting and organizing information, it's about creating a system for clear thinking. When information is organized, it is much easier to understand what's going on. As you refine your study guide, your thinking deepens. You are forced to filter through information. What's important, what's not so important, 
what information belonged where and why. Here's an example. Have you ever had a test where you were allowed to bring in a single note card? Well, if you were anything like me, you filled that note card with microscopic writing, the kind of handwriting that would make an ant need glasses. You put every piece of information you thought you might need on that note card. You were cramming it in there so you would be ready for the test. But when it came time to take the test, I know I was always a little surprised at how little I needed that note card. As a learning specialist, I now understand that that limited note card space forced me to filter and prioritize information. It made me lock in on those key concepts and how I might need to apply them for the exam. It forced me to think deeply. It forced me to think ahead. This is why it is not nearly as effective to use a study guide someone else created. The creation of the study guide is a key part of the learning process. The study guide is a result of effortful thinking. It's the type of thinking that builds the schemas and boosts your understanding. So if your professor gives you a study guide, that's awesome. They have given you clarity on the key concepts that you should be studying. But their study guide should be a template for you to build your own. You need to build your unique understanding of the material. It's your job to make that knowledge your own, not to memorize how another person's brain made sense of the material. You need to actively master the material in a way that makes sense for your brain. So elaborative learning is much more than just connecting information to prior knowledge. It's about laying the foundational framework that allows you to both add and expand your knowledge base. It's about creating a schema that allows you to think deeply and efficiently. Learning to intentionally build schemas and actively engage with new information will dramatically speed up your learning. Metacognition. Active is the key word here. Active learning means deep thinking. It means metacognition, a fancy word that simply means thinking about your thinking. When you use metacognition, you're not just absorbing information, you're engaging with it in a meaningful way. You're asking yourself questions like, how does this connect to what I already know? What part of this confuses me? How would I explain this to somebody else? How would I apply this to the real world? Those questions actually train your brain to build stronger neural connections because they force you to organize and evaluate your own thought process. Neuroscientists call this metacognitive monitoring, the ability to notice when you understand something and when you don't. Students who develop that skill learn faster and retain more because they don't waste time rereading what they already know. They don't zone out during lectures. Instead, they are actively hunting for information to add to their schema. I have a friend who's an English professor. And she once told me that when you read, you should be having a conversation with the author in your head. Questioning, agreeing, challenging, connecting, that is metacognition in action. Honestly, I don't think I'm quite at her level, but when I read, I'm not just going through the motions. I pause, I identify key concepts, I write little notes in the margins, I try to connect new ideas to things I already know. I come up with examples. That's the difference between passive reading and active learning between memorizing and truly understanding. Interleaving. Interleaving boosts learning by mixing up closely related topics, which forces your brain to compare, contrast, and discriminate. For example, learning increases when students practice addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division problems all mixed together rather than practicing just one type of problem. Interleaving works because it requires your brain's full attention. When you mix topics or problem types, your brain can't rely on autopilot. It has to decide which strategy and which concept applies to each problem or situation. The act of choosing keeps your prefrontal cortex, your thinking brain, actively engaged. During longer study sessions, I encourage students to switch study topics at least every hour. Even if you're studying for the same class, you can jump around to different parts of your study guide. By switching topics, you keep your brain alert and focused. Each time you shift between related but distinct ideas, you activate slightly different neural circuits. That switching strengthens the connection between those networks, helping you see patterns and transfer what you learn to new situations. It's the aha moment when concepts suddenly click together and your understanding deepens. Neuroscientists call this contextual interference. And while it feels harder in the moment, that difficulty is exactly what drives stronger, long lasting learning. So here's the big takeaway. Learning isn't magic, it's biology. 
The more you engage your brain, the more you will learn. The most powerful strategies all have one thing in common. They create effortful, deep processing by actively engaging with the material that you are studying. When you use the testing effect, you're pulling information out of memory and strengthening those neural pathways. With spaced repetition, you're giving your brain time to consolidate and build long-term memory. Through elaborative learning, you're constructing schemas, mental frameworks that make complex information easier to organize and to recall. With metacognition, you're stepping back, you're looking at your own thinking, and you're adjusting as you go. And interleaving keeps your brain on its toes, comparing and connecting ideas until you finally truly understand them. Each of these strategies works because they align with how the brain actually learns through effort, reflection, and rest. It's not just about cramming more hours in, it's about studying in a way that rewires your brain for mastery. If this video helped you understand how learning really works, please like and subscribe for more science-backed strategies that will help you study smarter, not harder. And remember, keep calm, keep learning, and you got this.